All right, so now I want to continue looking at the slip process and talk about what we call the slip systems. So a slip system is just the direction and the plane for which dislocation motion occurs. So we talk about the plane that separates the top and the bottom half of the edge dislo dislocation, for example, that would be our slip plane. That's where the actual motion of uh, planes pa going past each other happens. And so that's the slip plane. So this is the plane uh, in, on which slip occurs most easily. And this tends to be at the highest planar density planes within the material. And so those tend to be the ones with large interplanar spacings. Also, um, along in that plane, um, the slip occurs in a specific direction. And so the slip direction is the direction of movement. So this is that lattice displacement. So this is the direction um, with the same direction as the Burgers vector. And Again, easily, this um, we can kind of define slip directions for the most part as being the directions that have the highest linear densities. And so, you know, if you're wondering why we kind of talked about planar and linear densities in the previous chapter, excuse me, uh, this is one of the reasons, right? Because it helps us look at what might be a slip plane and slip direction because it has the highest planar densities. And so here we're looking at, for example, an FCC. This is an FCC crystal. Uh, we have the 111 type of plane um, highlighted. Um, and we can see that the arrows indicate possible motion uh, slip directions. So we have the slip plane highlighted and then possible directions. And if we recall from FCC, the 111 plane was the close packed plane. And we can see from this diagram of the 111 plane that the um, edges of the triangle here uh, occur on a 110 type direction, which are also the close packed directions because th that's where those atoms are in close contact. So if we kind of take for this FCC, um, that that we could have any of these one 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 type of planes because they're all equivalent, and same thing with the one one zero direction; those are all equivalent as well. It gives us a possible combination between those of twelve different slip systems. So it's twelve different combinations of plane and direction, and that means that in FCC we have twelve possible slip systems for motion of a dislocation to occur. For BCC and FCC, there are other slip systems, right? But it tends to go by the highest planar and linear densities for planes and directions, respectively. And so let's look at some examples then. So here um, in this table, which is also in your textbook, you see that for um, FCC metals, so um, copper, aluminum, nickel, silver, gold are all examples of FCC uh, or face center cubic metals. And so their slip planes tend to be again 111. The, and this means family of direction, a family of planes. So it could be any one of the 111 type. Um, and we can also have a slip direction of the type 1 bar 1 0. And again, the combination you have 12. Things get more complicated for BCC and HCP in that for different metals, you can actually have different slip systems. So for um, alpha iron, tungsten, and molybdenum, uh, we tend to have the 110 plane and the bar 111 direction, whereas you can also have um, the 211 and the 321 as possible planes with a similar direction. So the directions don't change, but uh, you can have different cases of uh, slip planes. And the same thing can be true of hexagonal close-packed. They tend to be the close-packed, so the, the 
basal plane, which is the 0, 0, 0, 1, but you can also have others in certain instances. And then the directions are those close pack directions, which is the 1, 1, bar 2, 0. And with those, you tend to have um, fewer or the same slip system. So BCC has 12 and 24 in certain cases, uh, but HCP has uh, less of these close pack directions because there are less basal planes in HCP than there is in FCC where there's uh, a number of these face centered, or sorry, these close packed planes. The Burgers vector um, also will be a fraction of the um, slip direction and it's uh, in each case it's either the last parameter divided by two divided by two or divided by three um, and that's the the magnitude of deformation that occurs so each motion or step that occurs um, that's what the burgers vector is here and the general trend we see with this is that metals that have a large number of slip systems tend to be more ductile they have to have they end up having more plastic deformation so they're more ductile uh, because there's more combinations in which plastic deformation can occur so fcc metals and you probably have uh, an idea of these copper uh, aluminum nickel the noble metals like silver and gold right those are very ductile metals that can be hammered into shape uh, very easily um, however something like an HCP metal, like titanium or zinc or cadmium or magnesium, uh, those are uh, relatively more brittle because there's not as many combinations of slip systems. And so HCP metals tend to be more brittle. And so we can get that by looking at the combination of slip systems available for those particular materials.